What's going on, everybody? Happy Friday. Long time no see. Uh, for me, I mean, a little bit of stuff going on. Tax season dwindled away, thankfully, finally. So that part of my extracurricular activities is done. So uh, a little bit more rest to the weary, I guess you could say. Uh, I know the website is bare, and I've answered a few emails already. I think I still got a couple more messages I got to get to, so I do apologize. But, yes, I did take a lot out of the store. Um, the idea of my change on to this is that as I go to shows, it's going to take about three to six weeks, and hopefully they're all good shows in that time span, to where when I get stuff from shows, I can get it listed in a store, leave it there for about a week or so, and then move the product on what not what doesn't sell out of the store so it should be happening here shortly i just gotta find the right shows to where there's the right boxes the right cards you know how it all goes with that stuff but it, it's that's the actual plan so i would say i think I, I put down by the middle of june is where i really wanted to be like no crap um where stuff's flowing from the store. What well, doesn't sell in there, if you guys know, whatnot's 11% fees for seller versus eBay 13%. So I think I'm going to just uh, go with that through the summer and just see how that blends and everything out. So just bear with me at the website onto that stuff there. Uh, as far as whatnot, I'm not here to promote them. I'm not affiliate with them. I do sell on and stuff like that. I will say that if you are patient enough on there, there are some great deals and some cards you don't hardly ever see pop up, come across. And know that, I hate using the word eBay comps a lot, but that's what everybody refers to. So say a card sells for 200 on eBay, it might sell for like 170 on whatnot, and that seller is still losing 11% on it. You can get some better deals on whatnot. You're still going to have to pay sales tax if you're a sales tax person, just like you would on eBay and everything. But you can actually pick some stuff up cheaper. And the good thing is, those people don't get paid until your card's delivered. I think it takes 48 hours for your, once it's delivered, for the money to be available for you to withdraw. There we go. Got that all out. So, just like anything, I like to give it a shot. Known some people, it's gone on whatnot. They liked it. Uh, people that I, I'd known for a while, have common respect for, with their values, their opinions on this stuff, and I'm going to give it a go. We'll see how it works out. Uh, really, mail-wise, there wasn't much this week. There really wasn't, guys. So, uh, and I had some boxes I opened, but they were lackluster, so I just killed the videos. So this here was out of a break with Jacob. He will be live with me on Overtime tomorrow. He enjoyed last time, so we'll be back at it. And we'll be talking more in depth with after I'm done with this with the topic I have planned for this video. So, Bomb, Sapphire, everybody knows I love Sapphire. Oops, these are upside down. I did get a box of Topps Chrome over, over, oh, wow, I can't even say it, Overtime Elite. There we go. Jalen Lewis Auto has a small surface scratch going, like, right there. And I picked this up on whatnot. It has just this little blemish up there. Uh, where my finger at? There we go, right up in here. And um, this is the gold. It's more rare from fine. Still has the code on to it. I'm sure if I take the code off, this is going to be a fine card. But a nine with the code on to it was like 190 bucks or something. So I'm going to look it over. The centering I used due dilly on it. Came back within a, uh, within standard for you know a PSA nine slash ten standard type deal, front and back. So really, it's just that little piece up there that I'm mostly worried on right now. All right. And yes, Pug is below me snoring because she wanted to play for the last half hour. Wouldn't let me do a video. So if you hear snoring, that is the Pug. All right. So hobby talk time here real quick. Tomorrow I'm going to go more in depth with this. And I, I know Jacob usually watches the videos or hears about them and stuff. So... A lot of talk, a lot of questions out there I've been getting recently on are the quote negative unquote videos on YouTube being negative enough to where it's affecting the market and all this other craziness that people are doing. All right, so here's my thoughts that are going to go into this, and I'm trying to balance it all out. First off, anybody that's doing videos out there, continue doing them. Don't listen to what other people say out there, uh, you know, that are doing videos as well, too. They're just criticizing. 
I think negative videos on the hobby, and this is what I mean by negative, talking about scams, talking about the garbage that's been going on out there, the pumping, the shill bidding, the trim cards, et cetera, et cetera. You guys get the point. I think it's good because it brings awareness to the hobby. It's positive. At the same time frame, that video that they're calling the negative video, ooh, you know, uh, it brings more people to talk about that stuff. Just because it's negative, it's still going to bring up the conversation aspect of it, and it might teach somebody what to look for so they don't lose their hard-earned money. I just don't get it, um, why they would pinpoint that stuff across the board. They were using examples that I was sending video links, and thank you for sending those video links because I don't watch half those people at all. I, I'd probably say I don't watch 90% of what I was sending links. But I know they were talking like the Mark's card incident and stuff like that. You know, I think that's great because it brings awareness that, you know, if you don't know the person who's submitting your cards and have that trust value onto it, it could end up bad. And Mark's cards ended up very, very bad. You had people promoting Mark's cards. <laughs> Why? Because they wanted to ride the gravy train somewhat with it. You know, um, I do know there's clicks out there. Everybody knows there's clicks in the hobby. There always has been. Now there's like different types of clicks is the way it's been called out there. I mean, heck, there's somebody out there giving badges for video creations out there. I'm like, whatever. You know, it's the same thing, just like the baseball card Hall of Fame YouTuber video thing It goes on every year. It, it's something to me that I just don't even pay attention to. I, get, I always have the conversations every year about it. But it, it, it has no phase to me because I enjoy doing the videos, which is the most important part of it all. And when I started seeing people engaging it and telling me they've learned something from it, I think that's great. Uh, most of you all know I spent 20 years in the Army. Uh, if you've ever listened to some of my videos, I kept that kind of away for the longest time because I didn't really want people to be like a veteran, you know, da-da-da and all that stuff. I just try to try to keep it aside. But I got to wake the pug up. She's getting way too loud even for me. Sorry, guys. But back to where I was at here, I know people hate change. I'm a person that accepts and likes change because it makes me think again and gets the old brain going to how am I going to overcome and adapt. At the same time frame, when you talk about change out there, you know, when you get used to the same routine over and over again, you become complacent. And whether it's with your regular job or whatever you're doing, same with the card industry. If you become complacent and you don't adapt to the change and learn stuff, it could turn, you know, and lead to something bad down the road. Whether, oh, well, you know, my buddies Johnny, Bobby, and Tommy are all in this guy's break. He must be good. And I go on there, I pull something big and never get it. And then, I, then me, Tommy, Johnny, and Bobby, and whoever else I just said, we all have now, you know, some type of, you know, quarrel between us. Like, oh, man, I trust you guys. This guy did this, blah, 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 blah. You know, stuff like that there. But, you know, it's going to happen. If you, like I said, if you are a YouTube creator, a content creator, I know you. Are, if some people want to be social media influencers, whether you have 10 followers, 100 followers, 1,000, 100,000, a million, it don't matter. Somebody's going to see your video out there one day. They might learn something from it, and that's the best thing about it. Unless you take that video down or somebody complains to YouTube, the video is going to be out there forever and ever and ever and ever. So... Keep doing what you guys are doing out there. I got there. Some people like to regurgitate stuff because they have to find content and stuff like that out there to post. And I know I'm going to see in the comments, some people have no idea what they're talking about. 100% agree. There's a lot of people just regurgitate stuff, have no idea what they're saying. Um, you know, those guys just, they, they won't let, they won't stick around. They'll find other avenues to try to do their side hustle on and make money and, you know, whatever else there is out there, you know. Hey, join Market Mover, save 10% off, and I'm getting that 10% in my pocket type deal. I mean, I don't know how, if that's how that works, but, you know, everybody always has something out there to where they're trying to hustle and make more money out there onto something. 
I think I even heard somebody come forward and talk about. I know we talked about the badge thing. We're talking about what is it, the cornball videos or something crazy like that that I was set and I just laughed at it because um, you could do all the schematics and all the numbers you want to run out there. But in the long run, it's people's videos that go, I hate using the word viral because it's really hard to go viral into the sports card platform but it goes viral that brings people back into talking people that weren't even talking originally now all of a sudden they're watching this stuff learning something they're engaging it again heck there might be people that have shied away from the hobby for the last year or two because of covid and then the big um bubble and now it's settled back down they might get back into it so no i i strongly disagree that the negative videos have brought down the market <laughs> Highly, highly against that whole train of thought of the process. What it was, was you had investors come in and they left. They moved on to their next investment. They made their money, moved on. A lot of people got stuck. And some of the investors are going to have to hold on to that stuff long term, maybe 20, 30 years to try to recoup a good percent of that money. Whatever it may be. It's just like stocks. But, you know... With YouTube, you'll notice there's like this, like the clicks, the hierarchy, who's the face of sports card, YouTube. I really don't care about all that stuff, honestly. Um, when I hear it and see it, and I'm just, it's one of the things where it just tunes me out completely when I see that. Uh, just, you know, some people could sit there and buy 100,000 subscribers, I found out, or buy a 50 to 100,000 views for their videos and stuff like that. Hey, if that's what they want to do to promote their video, whatever, spend your money. I, I, I don't care onto that stuff. Um, is it unethical? I, I don't really know the answer to that question. To be honest, I'm guessing it is, but you can still do it legally on the internet. So I guess it's one of them business unethical approaches that are shunned upon type deal to where it's not illegal, but it's shunned upon type unethical. Hopefully that makes sense. Um, I mean, there's a lot of people on uh, a lot of platforms. They promote their videos on Instagram and all these other social medias. They gain a lot of views. You just don't see the comments, the thumbs up, thumbs down, all that stuff too. Reddit, all that. So there's all kind of different reasons why when it breaks it down onto that stuff there. Um, yeah, they just, I don't know, onto that. That YouTube algorithm will always get me. But back to where I was at, because, see, I get sidetracked really quickly here. Um, my best advice to anybody out there is watch who you like. If you don't like them, don't watch them. You know, if you think what's coming out of their mouth is poo, then it's probably poo. But, you know, everybody's going to have their own opinion. Some people are going to have people that worship somebody. It's just like a grading card company. Some people worship... PSA, some people were, you know, I shouldn't use worship because it's kind of a bad thing. Some people are high on SGC. No, it's not 420. That was yesterday. Um, some people were still, you know, up and high on HGA. It is whatever your taste is out there. But to me, as long as the information is put out by somebody or multiple people out there and it's coming across and it's all presenting a message, saying, hey, be on the lookout for this, and this is the reason why, and stuff like that. I see nothing wrong with those types of videos. Heck, I can still think of back whenever we first seen some of these scam videos. And, man, I know Jacob's going to know more probably with the dates I've been trying to think. I think they were like 16 and 17 or maybe even 15, 2000 type. But, um, you know, we used to laugh about it and stuff like that there because, you know, it didn't happen to us. It brought some shame on the breaking and it was drove a few people away, but it brought new people in to see, hey, what is this breaking thing, too? So it, it has its positives and its negatives. I always think that hopefully the positives outweigh the negatives on stuff like that. But, you know, it's going to be what it is out there. Oh, wait, sorry, I had to answer an email and I thought somebody was knocking at my door. You know, just stupid comments like that. It's just kind of funny, you know. We can joke about stuff like that. But, guys, turn it over time to, tonight. I forgot it's tonight because I'm doing this video on Thursday night. 
we're going to hit some of this stuff up. Uh, you'll see some di uh, different opinions floating in the chat. Same with the comments, guys. I know you guys read through everybody's comments because I see you guys replying back and forth to each other, which is great. Uh, you might meet some new people out there, might be able to make a deal down the road with a trade, buy, sell, you know, whatever it is down there as well, too. Um, we're going to hit some of this up tomorrow night for sure because I know the chat's going to be into it because uh, that's pretty much what's been going on this past I'd say a week or two weeks I've been getting some emails about these videos out there. Um, I just don't take them personal at all out there. It's just somebody else's opinion on, you know, a video out there. I mean, I could go on and find a YouTube channel and be like, oh, you know, this and that and this and that out there. Most of you guys know whenever I'm talking about videos who they're about anyhow. I don't need to publicized names and shine the big old lights onto it and stuff like that. Some stuff's just such big news out there. You just can't even help but without having the names out there onto it. But all right, guys, take care. Have a good one. Hopefully see you on overtime. If not, I know a lot of you guys uh, watch it afterwards. Um, I'm going to hit the show up on Saturday live. Whatnot. Uh, Saturday night. Right now, for 9 p.m. Eastern, I might push it a little bit later, but I think I'm going to stick with 9 p.m. It's all going to be 22nd sudden death auctions type deal. And then uh, it'll be another overtime the following Friday because I'm trying to play my overtimes off with travel time to shows. So if you go on to the website, let me find out where it's at here. Boom. So this is the website here. You guys see there's not much in the store. I know. Shame on me. I've already beaten myself up over it. Go to events calendar. It'll give you an idea when overtime is going to be. So this is already in April. So here you'll always get to see when my whatnots are going to be live. Um, along with a lot of other stuff that I've put in there. Some of these holidays, I don't even know. Like when I look at it, like Easter Monday and stuff, that automatically populates. I'm trying to figure out how to get that off, so don't mind that. But if you go into like May, okay, I guess that's not how I do it. There we go. Overtime on the sixth, overtime on the twentieth. Um, the show on the fourteenth that I was going to set up was canceled, and I had to remind myself, so it's on there. But any of these shows I could possibly be at, I won't usually know, and probably till the Thursday, Friday before. But like this one here, I believe is in Richmond. If you pull it up, it'll give you whatever information onto it, uh, in case you're interested in going to it. Some of these are in Tennessee, some are in Indiana. There might be a few Ohio's on there. You got some of the bigger ones, like the Dallas Card Show stuff like that. But it just kind of uh, breaks down for me. It's what I'm looking at. I took off stuff like releases and stuff like that off of here uh, and moved it more to a personal calendar just so it doesn't clutter this stuff up. But, uh, yeah, this is pretty much like here's Huntington, West Virginia. I forgot about West Virginia, even card shows. I'm going to be doing some traveling. I'll probably set up at some. I'll always let you know if I'm going to be set up ahead of time. But if you're more curious, I always do it a month out for overtime. So that's May's right now, the 6th and the 20th. All right, for real, I'm out this time. Take care. Have a good one.